You've uh, decided to join the Liberal Democrats. This is after you left the, uh, uh, the Tory party uh, back in February over what you called the party's disastrous handling of Brexit. Uh, mm -hmm. You joined the Independent Group for Change. You left them after their disastrous performance in the European Parliament elections. You're now following in the footsteps of Chukuru Muna in, uh, in uh, joining the uh, Liberal Democrats. Why are the Liberal Democrats there? Well, I think the point is the Liberal Democrats and, and people want to just see um, a single Remain party emerging. They didn't want to see the vote fractured. People voted tactically in the European elections. And I think the point is that they sent a message loud and clear that they see that the Liberal Democrats are the party that is unequivocally making the case for us to remain at the heart of Europe um, and, and trying to stop a disastrous no deal. So, And I think also if you look at the social policies and uh, the, the progressive policies that they have, I think that, that is a very good fit. And so I'm really glad to be standing as a Liberal Democrat and actually helping at this time when we did 77 days from crashing out um, with, with no deal at all and all the consequences that we know would follow that. I mean, if you've got a policy idea that's so brilliant, why do you have to spend billions um, actually doing the contingency planning for what you know might follow around um, medicine supplies and uh, food supplies and the tariffs on, on farming products and so forth. You know, this, this is going to be a disaster. And so we need to see all parties coming together to try and um, actually come together behind a Remain alliance. Well, you say there's going to be a disaster. Look, there are many Brexiteers. You'll say they'd much prefer to have a deal than a no deal. But uh, in the 2016 referendum, you originally were for leave, and then you were unhappy about the, the £350 million. Oh, no, no, it was more than that, Julia, to be fair. Okay. I mean, the point is that I, I chair the Health and Social Care Select Committee. And week in, week out, we were hearing that there was no version of Brexit um, that was good for the NHS, good for science and research. In fact, quite the opposite. And, you know, as a former clinician, I had to listen to that evidence. Okay, and but that evidence has only got stronger that... The, the real world consequences, as opposed to the fantasy promises of the referendum, it just simply weren't there. Okay, well, let's, well, so let's, but let's look and say, just, 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 leave, just leaving aside, leaving aside uh, uh, those issues, and I'm happy to come back to this. Uh, in yeah. 2017, you did stand on a Tory party manifesto that said a uh, deal, you know, no deal is better than a bad deal. It said that quite clearly. You voted to, to you know, invoke uh, Article 50. You also said in a hustings in your own constituency, which in Totnes, which by the way, of course, voted 50 four percent uh, for leave so it was a higher percentage than the country on average and and you said we must do in my view uh, accept do do in my view is accept the result but now make sure that just because we're leaving the european union we're not leaving europe you said you basically said a second referendum take us out of the european union is a direct incentive for us to get the worst possible deal we shouldn't be going back and saying we don't accept the result of the referendum that's what you told your constituents before but you were elected is it reasonable to go back on that now you've said that and you were I elected on that I would say that you, you have to, I think, wherever you are, at whichever point of time you are in, you have to look at the evidence and say, where are we now? What's the balance of the evidence? And, and the balance of the evidence is, is pretty clear. I mean, you can just see what's happening to the pound, um, what's happening to, for example, inward investment in this country, what's happening already. You can see the changes around business. Alien side because they know lots of businesses will collapse. We're, we're about to head seventy days, seven days from now, into a no deal that will put. A, there's already not just will has already put our economy into reverse, and, but, and will hit the real world consequences of that are, are dreadful. So I think when when you're a politician, if you're the kind of politician that says, "Come what may, whatever the evidence, I'm just going to carry on," uh, then frankly, you're no good to anyone. You, you have you have as a politician, in my view. To a responsibility to look at the evidence and just be frank with people and say, you know what, the evidence is that we need to actually take stock and we need to do something okay. different. Okay, you say you want to look at the evidence, but the evidence, of course, we know that, uh, of course, instability, uncertainty is what causes things like the pound to fall. A uh, lot of the question marks about whether or not we'd get food shortages or medicine shortages, massive queues at Dover, they have been completely dispelled by not just the no deal planning, but by even the people who are in charge it's of the billion. ports in Calais yeah. and Dover. Yeah, such a great policy idea. Why are you having to spend billions? What other great policy idea in history requires you to spend billions because you know it's going to be a disaster propping up propping up businesses? I don't think that's know, what No Deal Planning is up, about. Buying up, uh, no, but it, 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 basically what it's saying is it's recognising there will be really serious supply chain problems with our medicines. 
no deal planning is about it's the same as sort of having travel insurance or content insurance you plan for a worst case scenario in case there was a trade or in case there were tariffs put on you know as well as i do but that boris brilliant. no no one right, second you don't know that boris johnson wants to get a deal and most leavers want to have a deal but if there isn't a deal you know as well as i do as well that on the ballot paper in 2016 it didn't say leave with a deal it said leave so it's leave deal or no deal if the option is not leaving or leaving with no deal to honor the referendum which you yourself said to your own voters in 2017 when you were re-elected is that you have to honor the referendum result yes but the point is that that we could have actually been out by now if the loudest advocates for leave had actually blinking both voted for it that's the reason we're not out well, that, no that's There's not true no, if all of the if all of the true. eurosceptic tory mps yeah. had voted for the withdrawal agreement it still wouldn't have passed in the commons they, I, I'm sorry, if they, they have, they have no agreement, even among leavers, about the form that leave should take. And this is the fundamental problem with the referendum. And, and so I think it's perfectly reasonable when you know what the final form it would take, you know, is to go back and say, is that what you meant? And certainly, if you're going to take people out with no deal, when we all know what the real world consequences of that would be, they would be serious. I mean, really serious then you have a responsibility, in my view, just to double-check with people. And, I, and frankly, I don't know why Boris doesn't do it anyway, because if he did put it back to the people in a referendum that confirmed, yes, absolutely, we'd be fine with your do-or-die Brexit, then at least it becomes people's Brexit as opposed to Boris's Brexit. Well, but, frankly, but, he's but even if it's going to be if it's... Hand for everything that goes wrong. And you know what? Things will go wrong. Um, we know that. The evidence is overwhelming that, that real people will suffer. And, you know, I just can't knowingly and deliberately put my farmers in my constituency out of business. OK, but, but, but Sarah, but Sarah, I, I'm so sorry, to, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's just time is against us. So I don't I don't mean to interrupt you. I would like to hear more of what you said, but time is against us. But you say people will suffer, but your own constituents voted to leave by 54 percent. And equally, if there were a second referendum, your own party leader, your new party leader, Jo Swinson, has said she wouldn't accept the outcome of a second referendum if it was once again a vote uh, to leave. Now, she's not saying that, oh, well, you know, I wouldn't be happy with it. She's saying she would actively fight to stop it from happening. There is never going to be an end to this unless or until the people who lose the referendum, whatever it is, accept that they have lost. Um, can I just, just pick up a couple of things there? Firstly, I don't think that's what she was saying. What she was what saying she said. In, her heart, in her heart of hearts, she's not going to suddenly become a Remainer. But, you know, that's not... The, so I think you've taken her out of... No, I haven't. I spoke answer. to her about it. And, it was quite clear. And, you know, so she's not, she's not going to suddenly feel that it's a great idea. But, but in terms of what happens next, which is where, where we... You know, say, going to where we are now, we're 77 days away from something that I genuinely believe will have some very serious... Okay, yes, you, you've said that, yes. ...people I represent. And I'd like, I'd like them to have uh, the final say in either a, a confirmatory vote, so I'm sure that's what they want, and, and I, for one, will be respecting it if I'm sure that's what they want, or they should have a general election. Because, see, Boris Johnson, you know, 99.8% of people listening to this programme didn't vote for him, never had an opportunity. They didn't vote for Joe Swinson Swinson either. They didn't vote for Jeremy Corbyn. I've never voted for a prime minister in this country. They're not prime minister, but they're not the prime minister. This is somebody who's come in with his do-or-die Brexit, with no mandate, um, and very serious potential consequences. Let's just ask in a general election, at least okay. that's what the last prime right. minister did. Okay, Sarah, right. You keep, you're, you're talking about a general election, you're talking about a second referendum, a confirmatory vote, whatever you want to call it. What about a by-election in your constituency? Of course, you, you were elected, as I say, on a, on a mandate uh, for to, to accept the referendum result. You've got a 54% leave vote in your constituency of Tottenham. You've also uh, actually, you actually uh, sponsored a bill in the House of Commons, which you wanted to mandate a situation where if an MP crossed the floor, joined a different political party, they would be required by law to hold a by-election. So when uh, is the by-election in Tottenham? Can I just talk about this? Okay, first, two things there. Firstly, that, that wasn't a bill. There was no bill ever produced. It's a 10-minute debate. It's a, it's a funny sort of device in Parliament. Where but you, you support. That's debate. a technicality. And, and the point is, that's a technicality because I supported the principle of having a debate around that issue. But you're absolutely right. There should be an election in Totnes. And I would like Boris Johnson to call an election in Totnes. But you don't know. No, no. You don't to need to wait for Jeremy Co- for, for no, Boris I, Johnson I, to call. You can, you can stand down today and then hold a by-election and stand but, as a Liberal Democrat so that you're 
local voters know exactly what they're getting and they can choose to re-elect you or not to re-elect you. If you believe so importantly that, well, voters didn't know what they were you getting know, they in 2016. Have a voice at all. Let, me, let me answer that point. If, if, first of all, I can't stand down today, you're going to need to stand down when Parliament oh, starts. Yeah. There's, 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 there's not a technicality. You can't do it. You have to, there's a process you have oh, to follow. September the 3rd. Are you going week, to stand down on September the 3rd? I'm going to be voting no confidence in the government and co- hoping that we can actually have an election then. But the point is, if I were to absent myself from the scene for six weeks, um, all that would happen is it would effectively increase the, the, the majority in Parliament for Boris Johnson. He has a majority of one. He has absolutely no mandate. It's a, and less than a fifth of 1% of the population had a chance to vote. Okay, you've said that already. You, so are you, okay, you're not going to stand, you're not going to call a by-election oh, on no, September the 3rd. Have, Sarah, to, please let me finish the question. Okay, and if you, if there is a vote, an attempt of a vote no confidence in Boris Johnson and it fails, and you can't just keep having one every single day, that's not how parliamentary procedures work. If it fails, will you the next day resign and hold a by-election in your constituency? As I've said, all that that would happen would mean is that there would be so you won't for six weeks i'm going to keep pushing for a general election and you know what and if you don't if get have, one let, well, let me answer the question if if we then have a crash out disastrous no deal um no deal brexit then i think that the people should have a chance to deliver their verdict on that and yes at that point i would be prepared to put myself forward um for a by-election but my preference and because I think it's absolutely the right thing to do is to have an election in Tottenham through a general election um, and to, or to have it as a confirmatory vote. So that, that's my preference. Um, but yes, of course, the people in Totnes need to have a say. But doing it in the period of a constitutional crisis, they would lose their voice altogether. They wouldn't have a say in time. Well, they for, don't have a say the right now. They elected a, to- a Tory MP who backed Brexit. But actually, but I would point out, Julia, that I was... I was selected by a fully open postal primary. So my constituents know that I'm a, a very centrist approach. They know the reasons why I could no longer be a Tory. And that in fact, the overwhelming response of my constituents was very positive about that. No, I'm sure it is. I'm sure you're a very good local MP. And you're an MP that I hugely respect. And I think your work on the yeah. Health and Social Care Committee, just because people disagree on Brexit, doesn't mean they can't respect and admire and like each other. But the reality is, all the grounds on which you are demanding that we have a vote no confidence in the current government, that we stop no de Brexit, that we have that we have a second referendum. Those are exactly the same moral cases you can give for someone to insist that you stand down right now and have a by election, and yet you're well, refusing to do thing. that. No, aren't you? What? Aren't you picking and choosing when you feel strongly in democracy and when uh, you don't? No, I'm not. I'm saying that by me absenting myself and there being literally no voice whatsoever in Tottenham, it wouldn't be time for people okay. to have a say if it was a single by election. That's what I'm trying to say, Julia. Okay. So it's pointless. The, the way that they can have a say is by Boris Johnson calling a general election and I would be supporting that.